What if the army's next troop carrier could ghost across a battlefield with no one at the wheel, punch through a wall of smoke, and drop a 50mm hammer on targets two miles away? Yet insiders warn it's already eating up a $45 billion budget and tipping the scales at a tank like 55 tons? Meet the XM30, the machine sworn to retire the battle-scarred Bradley. Prototypes are still torquing bolts, lobbyists are sharpening knives, and somewhere inside its hybrid electric hull, a digital brain is learning to fight without fear or fatigue. But lightning-fast innovation has torched army projects before, and a single Milestone B hiccup just reminded Congress of every past flameout. Is this the dawn of robotic overmatch or another shiny promise on the road to nowhere? Stick around, because the cannon isn't the most explosive part of the story. Four decades on the front line will age anything, even the Bradley, whose steel skin first rolled off assembly lines in 1981 and now squeaks in formation next to Abrams tanks built a generation later. Grunts cherish its battle scars, but they joke the old IFV feels like riding with Grandpa. The Army has tried to retire Grandpa before. In the early 2000s, the Future Combat Systems program promised a fleet of networked, lightweight wonders until ballooning costs and survivability doubts drove Pentagon leaders to axe the entire vehicle portfolio in 2009. Next came the ground combat vehicle. Heavier armor, bigger gun, even higher price. By 2014, congressional budget knives and weight complaints sliced that effort too, after more than a billion dollars had evaporated. Undeterred, the Army fired off a lightning quick request in 2019 for an optionally manned fighting vehicle. Only one company could meet the paperwork sprint, so leaders killed the competition in January 2020, rather than crown a lone, untested winner. Lawmakers groaned. Was the service doomed to an endless loop of canceled dreams? That same spring, Brass hit reset with a five-phase acquisition plan that spreads risk, demands open system designs, and locks contractors into firm fixed price deals. Industry answered. Five teams signed on in July 2021 to craft digital blueprints, betting they could beat the curse without breaking the bank. The result is the XM30, flashier, smarter, and far more ambitious than any predecessor. But grand specs can hide grand pitfalls, and the first thing that grabs you isn't the tech at all. It's the hardware that sounds straight out of science fiction. Imagine a fighting vehicle whose main gun doesn't even need a human finger on the trigger. The XM30's turret is unmanned, swinging a 50mm XM913 autocannon that spits programmable airburst munitions, each round smart enough to decide when to detonate mid-flight. Twin anti-tank missiles ride shotgun on the right flank, ready to swap heavy armor far beyond rifle range. All of it is stabilized by an AI fire control suite that reads wind, range, and target speed in milliseconds, then cues the gun like a sniper spotter. Powering this arsenal is a hybrid electric drive. In silent mode, the diesel sleeps while lithium batteries propel 35 tons of steel almost noiselessly, handy when you'd rather appear on thermal sensors as a ghost than a furnace. Flip to boost, and those same batteries surge fresh kilowatts to the drivetrain or to future bolt-on weapons. Think high-energy lasers or microwave blasters, all sipping from the XM30's onboard generator. Inside, the crew is stunningly small. A driver and a commander sit tucked beneath an armored deck while six infantry ride behind them, shielded by a double-V hull and ringed with Iron Fist active protection interceptors. Panoramic day-night cameras feed a glass cockpit of synthetic vision, augmented reality, and threat icons. Think fighter jet helmet, but for dirt track warfare. It all sounds unstoppable, until you realize these marvels add weight by the ton and dollars by the billion. And that's where the story tilts from sci-fi wonder to very real controversy. Picture this, the XM30 rolling at the head of a column with nobody inside, its driver and commander parked safely in a command post half a mile away, piloting through a tablet while the vehicle's virtual crew member keeps watch for ambushes. That's not a marketing fantasy. Optionally manned is written into the Army's requirements, giving the vehicle the built-in ability to switch from crew to remote control on the fly. Why chase that level of autonomy? Because survivability soars when soldiers aren't physically inside the blast radius. L3, Harris, whose radios and processors form the XM30's digital spine, boasts that its sensor fusion software can stitch 360-degree camera feeds, LiDAR, and radar into one fluid picture, reducing human workload and letting AI handle split-second threat calls. Yet the leap from assistive autopilot to 
combat robot rattles nerves. An Army Times deep dive admits that truly driverless armor is still dogged by safety hurdles and liability landmines. No commander wants a 55-ton runaway on a crowded road. West Point ethicists go further, warning that blind faith in machine judgment can erode accountability in the chaos of war. Inside the force, opinions split. Some tankers crave the remote option. Let the steel take the hit, not us. Others roll their eyes. Robots jam, batteries die, I trust a human trigger finger. The debate isn't just philosophical, it shapes funding fights and fielding timelines. And while the tech dazzles, a hard truth looms over every briefing slide. Autonomy, sensors, and lithium packs all weigh a lot. Up next is the elephant on the scales, the XM30's rumored 55-ton frame and the mobility trade-offs that come with it. A full 18 tons heavier than the Bradley it aims to retire and creeping perilously close to Cold War tanks like the original M60. That heft changes everything. Two vehicles were supposed to squeeze onto a single C-17. Now planners admit it may be one per aircraft, doubling flight hours before a fight even starts. Combat engineers fret that older ribbon bridges flex past their limits, and fuel crews see a thirsty hybrid that still guzzles JP-8 when batteries fade. Engineers point to layered armor thick enough to shrug off tandem warhead RPGs, a 50mm cannon that needs a beefier turret ring, and the lithium battery banks that feed that silent drive superpower. Then add iron fist interceptors, sensor masts, and cooling for racks of AI processors. Every line of code drags a few more pounds. Army leadership counters that weight is the price of surviving drone-guided artillery and top attack missiles. Survivability equals freedom of maneuver, they argue, and the extra tonnage buys soldiers those precious seconds to escape a kill zone. But veterans remember the canceled ground combat vehicle, shelved partly because its bulk strangled mobility. The question hangs in every briefing room. Will the XM30's muscle turn into a millstone when the shooting starts? Weight wars are dramatic, but mass isn't the only metric inflating. A far bigger number, the projected $45 billion cost, now takes center stage and watchdogs are sharpening their pencils. For the winner of the XM30 sweepstakes, the prize is staggering, roughly $45 billion in production dollars stretching into the 2030s, an armored gold rush large enough to bankroll a small nation. Yet before a single line unit receives a vehicle, the Army has already wired $1.6 billion in firm fixed price contracts to Rheinmetall and General Dynamics for detailed design and seven prototypes each. Pentagon Bean Counters insists the firm fixed price model keeps both vendors on a short fiscal leash, but the Government Accountability Office isn't convinced. In an eye-opening memo, GAO warned that the service's point estimate hides a multi-billion dollar uncertainty window tied to software complexity, unmanned control logic and an immature supply chain. The budget bullseye could wobble the moment code meets combat reality. Capitol Hill remembers past budget blowouts all too well. Future combat systems ballooned, ground combat vehicle drowned, and each left scorch marks on the Army's credibility. This time, lawmakers have hardwired quarterly cost variance briefings into the XM30's acquisition statute, missed those targets by more than 5%, and the program risks an automatic Nunn-McCurdy breach a kill switch few generals are eager to test. Meanwhile, inflation keeps leaking into every bolt and battery pack. Rheinmetall executives quietly admit lithium cells have doubled in price since the bid went in, squeezing profit margins already capped by the Army's fixed price ceiling. GDLS lobbyists counter that long-term volume discounts will absorb the spike if Congress funds all 3,800 vehicles the service wants. Behind the spreadsheets lurks a simple political truth. Cost overrun headlines can sink careers faster than enemy fire. And with two industrial titans locked in a zero-sum duel, financial brinkmanship is suddenly as strategic as armor thickness. Up next, the gloves come off as Rheinmetall's Lynx and GDLS's Griffin slug it out in a high-stakes prototype cage match, and a recent Milestone B slip has only sharpened the knives. Two giants now circle the prize ring. In one corner stands American Rhine Metal Vehicles, fielding a US-built spin on its Lynx KF-41. Modular armor blocks, a decoupled suspension built for desert washboards, and a turret stuffed with German optics that can tag targets while on the move. In the other corner, General Dynamics Land System swings in with the Griffin III lineage. Lighter hull lines borrowed from its Ajax Scout, an AI Edge computer from Palantir, and decades of Abrams sustainment credibility. Only one design will earn the coveted XM30 production tag, and every weld is now a resume bullet. The stakes spiked on June 12, 2025, when the Army finally cleared Milestone B, four weeks late after auditors demanded an extra cybersecurity deep dive. That slip may sound trivial, but each calendar tick squeezes the vendor's fixed price schedules. 
Prototypes still must roll onto Yuma's test trail by mid-2026, and every delay eats the contractor's own cash, not the Army's. Rheinmetall whispers that its fully digital turret is code complete, while GDLS hints its hybrid power pack already passed bench tests. Neither side wants to blink. Slipping first could brand a design as the future orphan. Lobbyists on Capitol Hill feed the drama. Rheinmetall pushes fresh blood messaging, new factory jobs in Alabama, and a clean sheet design unburdened by legacy parts. GDLS fires back that only an American prime with an existing supply chain can hit 2030 fielding without a cost spike. The duel now spills into committee hearings where lawmakers brandish hometown employment numbers like swords, and the pressure cooker only intensifies. The Army has warned it will down-select to a single winner before soldier touchpoint trials are complete, betting that rapid digital twins will close any test gaps. One misrouted cable harness or late software patch could tip billions to the rival overnight. Next up, we leap beyond spreadsheets and prototypes into the war of 2030 itself, where drone swarms, laser jammers, and cyber ghosts will decide whether the XM30 reigns supreme or becomes a breached firewall on tracks. Fast forward to the next decade's first firefight. Overhead, a cloud of palm-sized drones buzzes forward, beaming live video straight into the XM30's glass cockpit. With its modular open systems architecture, MOSA, the vehicle treats each drone as a plug-and-play sensor, one swipe on the commander's touchscreen, and the swarm becomes extra eyes over every ridge. A hostile quadcopter dives. The commander taps laser hard kill. A suitcase-sized directed energy node bolted to the turret flares, slicing the intruder midair, drawing power directly from the hybrid battery pack the army once fretted would add too much weight. But the XM30 isn't just a shooter, it's a data broker. Its edge computer breaks down enemy radio chatter, maps electronic signatures, and relays that intel to nearby robotic wingmen. Remotely operated M Robotics cargo carriers that haul extra ammo or evacuate casualties without risking human drivers. Every bite races through L3 Harris radios built to punch past Russian jammers and Chinese cyber probes. Yet every network port is a new attack surface. Cyber specialists warn that an open architecture can open back doors. One corrupted software update could flip a formation of XM30s into a mobile billion dollar paperweights. The Army's fix is a digital fortress concept zero trust encryption, continuous diagnostics, and an AI watchdog hunting anomalies before they reach the turret ring. Survivability now means more than thick armor. It's signature management to dodge loitering munitions, silent drive to sneak past thermal sensors, and a data shield to keep the enemy from poisoning the vehicle's brain. If the XM-30 pulls it off, it could redefine infantry warfare. If it stumbles, it may prove that complexity is the new vulnerability. All roads lead to one final verdict revolutionary war winner or cautionary tale in digital overreach. So where does the truth land? On the cutting edge or in the scrap heap? The XM30 promises uncanny firepower from an unmanned turret, near silent hybrid sprinting, and a digital nervous system that can talk to drones as easily as to human squats. Yet its 55-ton waistline strains bridges, its $45 billion bill tests Congress's patience, and its very brain, open, upgradable, networked, could expose the next cyber Achilles heel. Two defense titans are wagering careers on a fixed price knife fight, while soldiers debate whether they'll trust a robotic driver when the rounds start cracking. History says the Army's boldest vehicle plans often flame out just before the finish line. But if the XM30 vaults those pitfalls, it could flip the script on mechanized warfare, turning every platoon into a roaming sensor hive and every fight into a data duel. So, what's your verdict? Is this the dawn of a battlefield revolution or another billion dollar lesson in unchecked ambition? Drop your take below, smash that like button if you want more deep dives into future war tech, and hit subscribe, because the next breakthrough, or bust, is already rolling out of the factory.